From the lesson this morning we heard, In those days the Lord spoke to Achaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God, either unto the depth of hell or unto the height above. And from the Holy Gospel we heard, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Amen. Today, March 25th, is the day the Lord was made man. In the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, our mother. Today, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. If we would only understand the beauty of this action, this event, this cosmic event that changed the whole world, we would die. We would die of its beauty and of its goodness. We would die of love. Today is a very special day. Now the scriptures, especially St. Paul's letters, but also the gospel, of course, teach us that we were made for the Christ. We were made for him. We are his creatures. We are his creation. We were made to glorify him. How do we do that? We're made to know him, to love him, to adore him, to serve him. With our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength, and we will bring him glory. These are the rights owed to God. To know him, to love him, to serve him, to adore him, to serve him with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. To love him. These are God's rights. Owed to him by his creatures. He, as our creator, as savior, as our God, has a right to be known without any admixture of error. Thus we have the church always teaching us what is true and good and what is false and bad. He has a right to be loved with our whole being, to be adored as he shows us how in the Holy Mass especially, but also in things like the rosary. He has a right to be served, to be obeyed when he commands. Now man does this most easily. His creatures fulfill this most readily by seeking to fulfill their duties of their state in life. God provides a vocation for each man if he's only willing to say yes to God. And that vocation entails many duties, many of which we all share in common, such as to worship God at least once a week in the Holy Mass at Sunday. We all are required to do that, to give him the adoration which is owed to him. So, our duties are connected to the rights of God. They are set up to enable us to fulfill the rights of God. And we have a right to fulfill these duties owed to God as our Creator, as our Savior, as our lover. We have a right to do our duties. In other words, our human rights are connected to God's rights. We have a right to do what pleases God, no matter what any country, people, or city says. We have a right to do what is pleasing to God. Now, we do not have a right to do what displeases God. And we will pay for that if we decide, I got my rights. I'm going to go do what I want. Oh, we'll see where that ends. Now, Our Lady, Our Blessed Lady, fulfilled the rights of God to perfection. She entered the temple to know God and worship Him perfectly at the age of three. She stayed there and she led a holy life, a perfect life. And this led her to love God perfectly. So how do we show love? It's right here on display in this church. We sacrifice. We give things. How do you know somebody loves you? They give something of themselves for you. 
Sacrifice is how we show love. You always wonder if somebody loves you if they don't ever do anything for you. They don't really love me. They never show they love me. They never make any sacrifices for me. How do we know love? Sacrifice. The central act of the temple of old in which Our Lady grew up in was the daily sacrifices that foreshadowed this sacrifice. The Holy Mass. The central act of the church now is the holy sacrifice of the Mass. We unite all our sacrifices with this one. And so Our Lady offered the most perfect sacrifice she could. She offered herself, her whole self, her body, her soul, her mind, her heart, her whole life. She gave herself totally to God by taking a vow of virginity. I give myself to you. I want to worship you. I want to love you. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to sacrifice. That's why the priest takes vows. That's why the nuns take vows. They are worshiping God. They are loving God with their whole being, including their bodies. So, when the archangel Gabriel came, she hesitated. What? Me? Be a mother? How is this possible? How shall this be done? Because I know not man. Why did she hesitate? She did not want to transgress the rights of God. She's already given herself in sacrifice to God. And He has His rights over us. She had worshipped him through this complete self-sacrifice. Only when the angel explained that she was not transgressing the rights of God did she say yes. Did she utter her life-giving fiat. It was as if the angel was quoting the scriptures. Psalm 44 goes like this. Hearken, O daughter, and see and incline thine ear, and forget thy people and thy father's house. Take a vow of virginity. The king shall greatly desire thy beauty, for he is the Lord thy God, and him they shall adore. Psalm 44, speaking of Our Lady. But now she was rewarded with the highest place in the heavens because she obeyed and she gave birth. She conceived of the Holy Ghost and gave birth miraculously to the Lord. So note how she understood the connection between man's rights, man's duties, and God's rights. Once she accepted and understood that this was within God's rights and she was obeying His command, fiat, and then she went off to serve. She went to her cousin Elizabeth. Now compare that to Zacharias in the same chapter of Luke's Gospel. Zacharias is visited by the archangel Gabriel. And he says, your wife, Elizabeth, will conceive and give birth to a saint, to a forerunner, to a prophet, John the Baptist. And he says, how can this be? He's not worried about the rights of God. He's worried about how is this possible? I doubt it. I'm old. So is she. He was lacking in faith. And so he was punished. Our Lady had faith. She was worried about the rights of God and she was rewarded. You see how that works? Yesterday, we heard in the Mass about Naaman, the leper from Syria. He tried to extend his rights beyond their limits. And he was angry because they were not fulfilled. How many people in the world today are angry because they feel their rights have been trespassed against. That is because they have extended their rights beyond their proper limits. And they're mad at who? They're mad at God. Shame on them. They have forgotten that their rights are in relation to God's rights. And they've extended them too far. Naaman was upset 
because the man of God, the prophet Eliseus, would not come out to him and heal him directly as he expected, as he felt he had the right. Instead, he had to be baptized first. He had to go down to the Jordan and be dunked seven times, a symbol of the future of baptism. Then he was healed and he could come back and speak directly to the man of God, the prophet. Now Naaman was awake. He was aware. He sought to fulfill the rights of God and fulfill his duties of his state in life. The people of Nazareth, we heard about them yesterday. They overextended their rights as well. They thought our Lord had violated them and they grew angry. So angry, they took our Lord and they tried to kill him by throwing him off the cliff near their town. Thus, separating man's rights, extending man's rights beyond their limits, extending them and divorcing them from the rights of God leads to anger, it leads to murder and death. In the lesson from the prophet Isaiah, God commands King Achaz to ask for a sign. Achaz disregards God's rights to command. And so God gives a sign anyway. Achaz was a very sinful king. He was one of the worst of Judah. If only he had obeyed, it might have been a moment of conversion for him. But he ended up being a sign of the depths of hell. He disobeyed and died a terrible death. For that is where men go who insist on their rights, divorced from God, extended beyond their limits. They die angry. They die apart from God. On the other hand, we have Our Lady and Naaman. They show that those who submit to the rights of God seek to fulfill their duties of their state in life. They will rise unto the height of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.